So we've got an enemy that now kills us, but the enemy is a little bit boring. It doesn't move. So we're going to add some variety to our enemies. So what I'm going to do is take my enemy and I'm just going to copy and paste it a couple of times. So copy and paste. And in fact, I can use the clone command. So this just gives me, we'll do four different enemy types in this video and just gives us a little bit of variety. So let's start with enemy number one. What can we do to him? So we're going to edit behaviors, add a new behavior, and we're going to add the sign behavior. So sign, something that we've used before, just moves backwards and forwards. So we can click on it, we can scroll down, and we're going to make it move horizontal, backwards and forward, period of four seconds, and we want it to cover, say, 200 pixels. So it's our first enemy, and it moves backwards and forwards, so this just gives the player a bit of a challenge that they've got to try and get past. That's our first one. So we'll move him out of the way to the top and we'll spawn in enemy number two. So enemy number two, what we're going to do is add a new behavior. Scroll down and this time this one's going to orbit. So we're going to add this one to our level and we're going to scroll down to the orbit settings. And we've got our primary radius, so our vertical radius, and our horizontal radius. So we can also get it rotating as well. I'm just going to turn that off for this example. So now we've got an enemy that spins around. So our player's got to be very careful to avoid this one as well. Now you might notice at this stage, our player's not actually being destroyed. So we need to quickly fix that. And all we're going to do is just add another event. So add another condition and if player is overlapping another object, enemy two, and we destroy the player. At the moment, this is set up so <clears throat> both commands have to be met for the player to be destroyed. So the player will only be destroyed if it touches enemy one and enemy two. All we're going to do is right click at this end and turn it to an all block. And that will just fix that problem. So if it touches any of the enemies, the player will be destroyed. If the player is destroyed, it restarts the layout. So that's enemy type number two. So let's move this guy out of the way. Let's move in enemy number three. So this one, we're going to add the behavior and we're going to turn it to the platform behavior. So it's going to have the same behavior that we've got. What's really important about this is that we turn off default controls. If not, when we move, the enemy will move at the same rate as us, which doesn't really make sense. We're then going to go to our event sheet and we're going to add an event for this and we're going to say on the system and we're going to go for this option every tick so this means that the game runs about 60 frames per second so on each one of those it's going to do an action so every tick what action do we want it to do well, we want to go to enemy number three and we want to scroll down to this simulate control so this acts as if we're the ones pressing it, so it acts as we're the ones pressing left. What would happen? Well, our character would move left, so the enemy moves left. So we're going to click done. So let's run this and let's see what's happening. So you'll see that our enemy is moving all the way to the left, and then it just falls off the screen. So it's our very, very silly enemy that just moves all the way to the left. Not too imposing by itself, but when there's lots of them, or we've got a mix of enemy types, could be a bit more scary so we move to our final enemy now and we'll just move this one out of the way enemy number four we're going to have this one work the same as enemy number three but when it gets to our player or no player jumps over it it's going to turn back and go towards our player so how do we set sync up like this so first thing we need to do is need to edit behaviors and we're going to add the platform behavior and then we can go to our event sheet so we can set up a new event and what we're going to do is check if enemy 4 we're just going to scroll down all the way to compare x so the x position is how far along the screen it is so we're going to check if the x position is greater than and we don't want to want zero we want to actually check the players so we're going to do player 
scroll down, and we find player X. So player's X position, just like so. So if our enemy is greater than the player's X position, it means it's on the right side of our player. So we want to move left. So enemy four, simulate control left. We also need to do a quick repeat of this, but do it for the other way. So we want to compare X again. This time we're going to check if we are less than. And I'm just going to type in player X this time. You might be wondering what happens if we're equal to. Well, the chances of us being equal to the player's X means that the player is going to be above us or the player is going to be on top of us. If the player is on top of us, the player will be destroyed. If the player is on the platform below, it will just wait until the player is either one side or the other. But bear in mind we're talking at a pixel level, so it's a very low chance. So player X is the other. And then enemy 4, simulate control, and we'll move that right. So we should have something that looks like this. Remember as well to just go to enemy number 4 and make sure default controls are off as well. And that way you won't be moving the player as well. So let's test this. So he moves towards us just like our last one does. Now if we jump over it, you see he runs towards us instead. So this makes a very, very difficult enemy. Now this enemy currently moves at the exact same speed of us. So this wouldn't be very fair for our player. So you'd want to change the speed down of this one, change his max speed to a much smaller amount. And you also need to remember to add the collision on by just go and add another condition. Check if player is overlapping enemy number four. So that's four enemy types that you can add into your platform game. They're very, very simple enemy types. Combined together though, they can make the level fairly challenging.